Hello! In this video, part of Delta's series on getting started with Zoom, you'll learn tips about how to effectively present content during your Zoom meeting. First, we'll talk about general tips for keeping poor quality audio or video from distracting from your content. Then we'll talk about adjusting the screen view and layout for your meeting. Last, we'll talk about sharing a presentation, application, or other material in your meeting. Let's get started with talking about your Zoom audio. The microphone you use can make a huge difference in your audio quality. Most laptops have a built-in microphone, but the audio quality from a built-in microphone is far worse. For a demonstration, I am now using the built-in microphone on my laptop and playing a recording of a dog barking. Note the improvement in sound when I switch to a headset, similar to the one pictured here. The recording of the dog barking is far less of an issue when using this sort of microphone that is designed to pick up sound from, in, from only one direction. Using a headset with speakers will also minimize audible distractions for you. Some people use wireless Bluetooth earbuds. These allow you to move around and can be more comfortable for some. They don't do quite as good a job of eliminating environmental noises, but they are better than the built-in version. Once you've selected the audio equipment you want to use, you can also modify settings in your desktop client to optimize your audio. You may recognize this screenshot from the video on using the desktop client. This is the audio settings menu. Here you can see that you can ask Zoom to suppress background noise, and if you know you're in a noisy environment, you might select high for your meeting. You can also access some advanced settings if you're interested in exploring further. When it comes to video, most laptops also have a built-in webcam. You might consider purchasing and using an external webcam. It will give higher quality video and can be repositioned for a desired angle or pointed at anything in the room that you'd like to show your participants. If you're presenting from your laptop, you'll often be looking down at the screen and camera, which is less flattering. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of my own video feed. The picture on the left is the video from an external webcam, and the right is the laptop webcam. As you can see, the angle is different and the resolution and color are far better on the left video. The video settings in your desktop client can also help you to manage your appearance. You can adjust for low light either manually or automatically using the drop down menu to select one or the other. Touch up my appearance softens the edges of the video for a more refined look. Again, you can find more advanced settings from this menu as well using the advanced button. While we're here, you can also see a couple of settings that have to do with your own experience viewing the video feed in a Zoom meeting. Whether you see non-video participants in a gallery view, they would just show up as a profile picture or name, and whether you automatically see yourself as an active speaker when you are speaking. We'll talk more about active speaker view in a moment. You can also choose here how many participants are in a gallery view. This leads us to topic two, which is adjusting the screen view and layout for your meeting. This picture shows an active speaker view. In this view, the active speaker takes up most of the screen while the other participants are shown in a smaller view across the top of the screen. Let's say you have a keynote speaker or a group of students or others presenting to your class and you want to put the spotlight or focus on them for a portion of the meeting. Simply hover over their video, find the three dot button for a more menu, and then click spotlight for everyone. That person is now in the active speaker view for all your attendees. You can even do this to yourself if you are delivering content in the class meeting. You can spotlight up to nine participants. Go to the More menu over Additional Speakers and then select Add Spotlight here. The same, menu, the same menu is where you will go to remove a spotlight as well. Your other option is Gallery View where you can see up to 49 video feeds at once. Incidentally, in this screenshot, you can see the button where you'll go to toggle between Gallery and Active Speaker View. Gallery view might be useful in a meeting where there is a more freeform discussion rather than a presentation. When you are in gallery view, you can rearrange the order of participants on the screen by clicking and dragging a participant's video to a new location. If you want your participant's view to match your own, you'll use the same button at the top left and select follow host video order. You can also release others view from following yours in the same place. Our discussion thus far applies to when no one is sharing a screen in Zoom. Our last topic for this video is sharing your screen or application with your Zoom participants. To share content within a Zoom meeting, simply select Share Screen at the bottom of your meeting window to get started. From here, you'll be given various options for sharing, such as sharing your full desktop or an individual application you have open on your computer. 
You can also access advanced sharing options and the ability to share an individual file from a specific location as well. If you're planning to share content that contains audio or video, be sure to select Optimize for Video and Share Computer Sound in the bottom left-hand corner. When you're ready, select Share. During a screen share, a floating toolbar appears. From this toolbar, you can stop the share, pause to take a momentary break or prepare other materials, or select New Share to select another piece of content for a seamless transition. The floating menu also offers some tools to enhance your presentation. Click on Annotate to open the Annotation Tools and find the Spotlight button. Here you can make your mouse into a laser pointer to point to something on your screen, put an arrow next to something on your shared screen to draw attention to it, or use the vanishing pen to make a temporary drawing on your shared screen that will fade away in a few seconds. While Zoom offers a great way to deliver content, remember that delivering long lectures over Zoom is probably not the, the most effective way to teach remotely. If you do choose to deliver your lectures in Zoom, try to work in some sort of interact interactive activity every 10 minutes or so to break up the class period and engage your students. Better yet, consider delivering your lectures through shorter videos delivered asynchronously and use the time in Zoom for small or large group discussions or other activities that you can't do asynchronously. This concludes our video on presenting effectively in Zoom. Our next video in this series will cover recording your Zoom meeting.